Hey everyone, just had to interject here really quick before this video starts. So there's always been this idea that Tesla may be doing something in the background with full self-driving in between major software updates, whether they're flipping weights or toggles or changing something without actually sending us an update that we install on our car. And there's been some evidence for this. I've never really fully supported it. Uh, but what you see in this video and what I talk about was kind of my strongest evidence yet. And I still wasn't declaring that this was happening, but Something has definitely changed with the way the Cybertruck is driving around, but with all that said, I wanted to say, while I was in LA talking with different members of the Autopilot team, I did confirm that at least as of today, Tesla does not really change anything with the vehicles in between software updates. For any big changes to happen in the way that the car acts or behaves, you're going to need an actual software update. I wanted to put that out there. That is the fact as of today, although I still wanted to post this video because another fact is that my Cybertruck is definitely behaving differently than it has in the past. This video is brought to you by Joa, maker of premium Tesla and vehicle accessories. Claim your discount by using the link in the description below. What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another full self-driving Cybertruck video still on FSD 12.5.5. I've enabled FSD here. We're going to see if the Cybertruck will start, but a lot of times you have to give it a little accelerator tap at the beginning and something has changed here. So here's our little tap and off we go. So something's changed and it's really weird. We have not received an update. We got FSD in the Cybertruck a little over a week ago, was very happy with that update, found some, you know, issues as FSD always has, you know, I don't know if it's Cybertruck specific or 12.5.5 specific. Sorry, I do have some loose stuff in the back. You're going to hear moving around a little bit. Um, but you know, some things that I was seeing consistently, number one, I was seeing right and left turns were being taken occasionally too sharply. I was saying about 30% of the time was just kind of my guess to give you an idea of how often I was seeing these turns be taken too sharply or not sharp enough, meaning if it was taken too, like a left turn taken too sharply was putting us into uh, oncoming traffic, which happened a couple of times. Uh, there were no vehicles there, but it was putting us into that lane. And other times it wasn't turning sharp enough, like on a right turn, it wasn't turning sharp enough, so it would also go a little too wide and, and kind of get towards the other lane there. We do need to, I need to pause this to see if we're gonna drive through this no turn on red because FSD has been doing that lately. So we'll pay attention to that. Uh, all of that, yeah, it does, it does seem like it wants to continue here. We'll see. So all of that was happening. Uh, the other thing I was saying was happening was the wiggling of the steering wheel, like for turns or sometimes just little adjustments in the lane, the whole, um, steering wheel or squircle would kind of like wiggle and then, you know, find itself. Nothing I needed. That isn't something I needed to take over for, but it was happening. And then the other thing is bouncing off of lane lines or just completely driving over lane lines, especially bends in roads. I was not seeing this in the hardware four model Y that has FSD, but in the Cybertruck, on the highway even, or any, so we did wait for the green. So that's, that's good news. Um, the Cybertruck has been, so see this turn was a little tight, not, not that big of a deal. Um, the Cybertruck was bouncing off of lane lines or going around a bend, actually driving fully over the lane line in like encroaching on other cars. Now, what's changed? Again, we haven't had an update. The Cybertruck does connect to Wi-Fi and do all these uploads and downloads and things as, uh, you know, it's, it's sitting in my driveway. Well, the turning, the too sharp or not sharp enough turns, uh, is not happening anymore. <laughs> so, you know, my last video, I talked about it a lot. I was seeing it enough to kind of comment about it and, and put it out there and say like, oh, hopefully we'll get an update and see that fixed. I have not seen it since. In the same streets where it was happening, um, and there's always for a long time been this kind of thought that people have where FSD is getting better without like a full software update. Like Tesla is tweaking things in the background or somehow on the cars without sending an update. And I'm going on a little bit of a tangent, but this all relates. It is possible for Tesla to change things on your car without a full software update. Now the proof I have of that is, let me expand this for us. Actually, I need to change this really quick. Let me do that. We are stopping for these people. Very good. So the proof I have of that is a while ago, a software update was like 10.3 or something. We were getting some weird emergency braking in FSD, like dangerous stuff. And Tesla, see why you, like I would have gone slower towards this pedestrian. Tesla turned off automatic, automatic emergency braking, the toggle in the menu. Man, you messed that up. Oh, I pressed the wrong button. That is a that's a construction zone and you tried to drive into it. So that was stupid. Like you haven't messed that up in so long. 
Um, so we have a disengagement already here. All right, I skipped over that long, boring red light for you. So uh, what I was saying before <laughs> Cybertruck tried to drive in the construction zone is uh, Tesla can change things in software without a full update. We had this toggle for automatic emergency braking. It was being turned off remotely without a full software update. So you'd go in your menu, you'd see the little toggle, it would be turned off. You didn't do it, but it happened remotely without a full software update. So the fact is t Tesla can, they do have the ability to do these things in the background. Now, how often do they do them? Are they still doing them to this day? Nobody knows, it's all just kind of guessing. But people do notice, including myself, changes to FSD, especially in the first few days after an update. They'll, you know, have it do something weird and then it never does it again. Um, and I don't know, I'm without hard evidence of any of any of that, I'm, I'm skeptical. I don't want to like talk about it too much or cover it too much because there's there's no proof. It's like, you know, is it happening is, is whatever. Um, you don't know for sure, but there's evidence for it, right? So did Tesla fix some of these turns that were too sharp or not sharp enough without a software update? Well, anecdotally, my evidence driving around is that yes, it did fix it because these were happening often enough that I was seeing it every once in a while. And you know, after the past few days or whatever, I just have not seen it. Are you gonna mess this up again? Like, I do not understand how it sometimes messes us up and sometimes doesn't. It was doing this intersection correctly for the longest time and now it's screwing it up again. I'm just gonna let it happen because I wanna go this way. <laughs> I'll click the report button. Uh, you can add that to a disengagement uh, if you want in the data since I share all the data. So anyway, we are looking for uh, those turns the other thing is the steering wheel wiggle, gone. I haven't seen it. It's, it's gone. Maybe we'll see it again in this video, but I wanted to return to some, uh, two things in this video. I wanted to return to some of the streets that we you know, saw this stuff happening before. And then I wanted to, um, also at the end, we're just gonna, so you're hitting, you're hitting the brake here again. So it's seeing the stop sign on the other side of the road. Some of you pointed that out, but the Model Y never did that. So I, Man, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> and so I just dragged with all these things. So we're staying back um, because of this guy, I think, which this is an okay stopping spot. There's not much room up there, so um, I'm okay with it. But anyway, at the end of the video, after we go through downtown a couple loops, um, we're going to just drive over to Walmart. I just picked the Walmart. It's a little far away. Just for a normal drive, because I do want to get some normal drives in here where I'm not like putting it through these places I know it screws up. And we can kind of see how, how the Cybertruck does. So we got the green and we're not moving. So I'm gonna tap the accelerator here. We do have to move around him. And we gotta move through the green. There's a pedestrian to our left there. We go nice and slow. Okay, so that was actually really good because she was kind of walking in our way there. Um, and Cybertruck gave her enough space while still assertively moving through the intersection. So, but again, it's an, you know, it's another uh, intervention. Since I tapped the accelerator, the Cybertruck may be, you know, FSD may be more, a little more um, apt to continue moving since I gave it that tap. I wasn't continuing to press it, but um, it does modulate its behavior in the first or the next few seconds after you interact with it for sure. All right, so this unprotected left here has been a little assertive in the past, but if you just go for it, we are clear. Yeah, that felt great. All right, very nicely handled there. It like gave a little peek, it kind of slowed into the roll made sure nobody was coming and then just continued through. It felt really good. So yeah, that right turn was a tiny bit wide, but uh, I mean, it was better than the last time we took that right turn for sure. Uh, but there was no car this time for us to interact with. So it's not fully comparable. So we're gonna take that out of here, go back into the busy part of downtown and then um, I'm de okay, it was definitely our turn, so that was good. Good right turn. A little braking there, so <laughs> good right turn, and then it breaks at the end of it to check me. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Um, yeah, see, this is this right turn's really weird, which is why I like to keep it in here. Even this bus is like on two lanes, um, and the bus is huge. He doesn't, you know, have much of an option to perfectly um, position himself in the lane, but you can just tell by the nature of what you're seeing here that it's a weird situation for a right turn. So that's why I keep it in here. So last time we turned in between the two lanes here and we sat in between them. So again, this time we're like riding the line a bit, but we're not in between the two lanes. 
we got into this lane as we should have. Um, and then we can, you know, we have a left turn coming up, but we have some time. So we can move to the left. Really, I would probably wait till the intersection is, is finished, but Cybertruck's kind of showing everybody, you know, yo, I need to move to the left here. And, you know, people drive up. They're like, I don't really care. You need to move to the left. <laughs> I'm moving through here. Whatever, it doesn't really matter to me. That's just the way people drive. But we did get over. I mean, we waited, let the Bronco go by, and we are in the correct position for our next move, which is great. So we have an unprotected left here. We do have some pedestrians to wait for. We do have a lead car though, which usually makes things a little easier for a cyber truck. Unless the lead car does something wrong, then <laughs> sometimes FSD will follow the lead car. Uh, but no, that time it made a legal uh, left turn. This is the lane we were supposed to move into and then you make your lane change. So even though the human in front of us, you know, did it illegally, which like, you know, most people are going to do it that way. Uh, FSD was able to do it uh, legally and correctly. So that was nice. All right, we'll make our right turn here. This is another one we should look out for too sharp, not sharp enough. Tiny little wiggle there, like a little like mid turn correction which is, you know, I don't hate it, not a big deal, but the turn was again, like flawless. So I don't know, part of me was thinking like, maybe I'm getting used to the you know, the bad turning or something, but definitely not. Like I have not seen it turn onto the wrong side of the road. I have not seen it cutting way too. I mean, it was just, it wasn't, it was just objectively bad before. Um, again, like 30% of the turns were just incorrect. And now like this lane change is really nice, getting away from the construction nice and early with plenty of space. The lane changes are just really cleaned up. Now, I'm still getting, I don't know if you could tell there through the video because it could be hard to tell, but sometimes the stopping will be a little late. But what's really weird about the late stopping in Cybertruck specifically is even though I feel like, you know, this stopping's a little late, I've hit the brake a few times and left a voice note when I feel like it, it didn't, you know, begin its slowdown soon enough. By the end of the stop, it's still extremely smooth. Like it was too late of a stop and the deceleration was harder than it should have been, you know, had the stop been appropriate, but it felt good the whole way. <laughs> so you're like, well, we're coming up a little fast on this. Oh, okay. But you didn't slam the brakes. It wasn't a hard stop or anything. Uh, moving through that yellow. Uh, that's, I like it. <laughs> that's a little uh, sketch. Some people may not like that one, but, but I will take that any day. I'm surprised it did it. And then here. Uh, okay. So this is a left turn lane. Oh boy. And again, the human came here and went straight. So FSD started to move over to the right lane, but then it followed the human into this left turn lane. So if we don't get in anyone's way, I'll allow it. I do hear, hear some sirens behind me. So if I see that, yep, I'm gonna move out of the way here. So I have to take over and that is a disengagement 100% because that's something that at this point, the vehicle should be able to uh, do. And there they go to the left. So that's why you move out of the way. Now I'm like randomly in the intersection. So I'm just going to move through here. I think that's probably appropriate. Let me know what you think. <laughs> you know, that, that's, I don't, okay. Emergency vehicles are not an edge case in any sense. Like why the software that's supposed to be in a couple of days here on 1010, you know, like a robo taxi can't appropriately react to emergency vehicles. Why that's a thing. I don't know. But having to move out of the way from the middle of the road, I end up in the middle of the intersection. You know, what is, what are you going to do there? I, you just kind of do what you got to do. Um, I, I don't think you would get a ticket for moving out of the way of an ambulance, but it gave us a little uh, uh, time boost there. So this is an interesting spot. If you've been watching for a while, you know that uh, we used to come here a lot until FSD basically like conquered it. I, I would go through these same spots and FSD like stopped making mistakes. So I took some of these parts out of the route because it wasn't messing them up anymore. Um, it, I guess it would be a good idea to go back and visit them and see if it's like still fixed. Um, but yep, pretty interesting to see it again here. It's been quite a while. Nicely moving through that green there. No hesitation with the pedestrians close to the road, which, you know, I'm kind of either way, like she was looking down at her phone, so I didn't expect her to step out. Um, but if FSD wants to be cautious in that scenario, I'm okay with that too. So it kind of, you know, it, there's a few different correct behaviors in different situations, in my opinion. So this intersection sometimes is really busy. Today is not one of those days. 
and we nicely wait for that pedestrian and smoothly move through when we have room. We almost should have moved over for them, but he moved out of the way. This car's pulling out. Nice slowdown. It was tight there. Nice slowdown. Not hard braking, not too slow, but a very nice move through that tight spot. Really liking it. So we'll stop here. Another intersection that can often have a lot of pedestrians. But today, again, is not one of those days. And very nice. As soon as they're out of our way, we move through. What do you want? I mean, that was uh, handled perfectly. All right, another one of our slightly busy intersections. A little bit of hard braking there at the end. And we have lots of pedestrians usually. I don't know, is today is school off today or something? <laughs> usually we have more pedestrians and way more cars at this intersection. But I love that we're inching up. You got to start to move through here, even though people will continue to go through. And very nice interaction with there was a cyclist. So there you go. Tiny bit sharp. But again, like without a car there, I don't think that's that big of a deal. Uh, we had a cyclist coming towards us, but they wanted to go past us as we completed our turn. Didn't hesitate for that. Uh, so a lot of things being tracked there that were all kind of appropriately dealt with. So moving into this next part, uh, we're still in downtown for a second here and there'll be, you know, a little bit to interact with. But after that, uh, I don't, I mean, I've never really taken this route, so it doesn't look all that crazy. Um, but I just kind of randomly picked something that was a little farther away. And we're going to let uh, FSD take us there for kind of an A to B drive. So right now we're at five miles. So, you know, if you want to do the uh, data separately, I'm just going to put it all in one drive. Um, there's five miles downtown. We had what a disengagement and a couple of interventions there. Um, maybe two, do I have two disengagements? One, one, whatever it, you know, you know, <laughs> watching the video. Uh, and then the rest of this is just kind of like a normal drive to see if, uh, Cybertruck FSD can take us A to B like a normal drive. Like I got to go to the store. It's going to take me there. Now I do kind of want to comment on the weird turns and stuff, you know, midpoint here in the video in that they do feel better. I don't know what the heck's going on. I don't know if I'm making it up or imagining it. You know, I'm always skeptical of saying anything concrete about any of this stuff because it's, you know, unless you do a thousand miles, you can never really be sure. And even then, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, oh, look at that. Silverado EV towing a big old trailer. That's very nice. Much better at towing than the Cybertruck for, for long distance, I'll say. Um, but yeah, that all felt good. Now, the driving overall, well, let's save that for the end. Let, let's get, get towards the end and I'll, I'll give you my thoughts on that. All right, so a little hesitation there at the green light. I did give it a press. Um, it's probably due to this scooter next to us. Yeah, look at that wiggling. It's just too scared to pass this guy. And wow, he is moving over towards us. All right, and then Cybertruck's finally like, all right, we're going to get away from you. Um, so I, I believe that hesitation was due to uh, the scooter being right next to us there. But we're going to get to test it again here. Let's see. So I'll try to give it another second, but there's a big line of cars behind me. I don't want to hold everyone up. So that was an intervention. We'll see if we need another one here. All right, so he moved through the red and we're still getting a delay. Okay, I mean, I didn't press it that time, but I don't know, perceptible delay, that's for sure. All right, we got a nice roundabout here. And if I'm not mistaken, I think, is this one of the most dangerous roundabouts in Michigan? Uh, no, maybe this isn't the one, but taking off there, we do have a car coming towards us, but plenty of space and room to drive through there. And we missed our exit. Let's see if we'll go all the way around. Yep, nope, we're gonna go this way. All right, so not very good. And we need to yield for this dude, which we are doing. And what is that gonna do? It's just gonna take us on a different route. So, oh yeah, that added some time and everything. Unfortunate that uh, Cybertruck missed its uh, exit there on the roundabout and uh, didn't just go all the way around. I think because there was a car that we were gonna exit with at the same time, I think uh, FSD, yeah, that is. That was the one of the most dangerous roundabouts in Michigan, that's so funny. Um, I didn't even plan to go through that. But I think because we were going to exit with that car at the same time, Cybertruck thought the exit was blocked off and just kept going. Um, so while it was at least a safe maneuver and, you know, nothing dangerous about what it did, it was unfortunately kind of stupid.
All right, so we're approaching the end here. Uh, I will say, so the A to B portion, we had two, I mean, I don't want to talk too soon, I had to do something else, but I had to hit the accelerator one time for the, the green light delay, which it, it may have gone, but I didn't want to wait any longer. A couple of seconds is long enough for that. And then it did take the wrong roundabout exit, which added about three minutes to the drive. So the good news is no safety critical things, but you know, people are using this for convenience. You're not going to want to add three minutes to your drive. <laughs> it's kind of annoying when you're trying to run to the store, or, you know, whatever you're actually doing um, in your driving. So not the end of the world, but if you add these things in that, that add inconvenience, then people aren't, you know, going to be as apt to, to be using this. Um, and then the first half we did, you know, I would consider the construction zone part a safety disengagement because yeah, we can't drive into the construction zone. It's not like it was going to crash into anything, um, but it would have driven in there. Who knows how far it would have gone uh, and then been kind of stuck. You have to back out and, and, you know, maybe be in people's way. Uh, so that's kind of annoying, but here's the stats of, of this drive. We got, uh, I don't know, 12 or 13 miles uh, with several interventions, disengagements. Overall, FSD for Cybertruck uh, so far, now I have a few hundred miles of impressions um, to give you. It, it works. It works pretty well. It's, it's like FSD in other cars where it's like, you know, 90 to 99% working and everything. Uh, but there's, you know, more to be done. Oh, I want you to go down there and there's a cart in the way. And uh, it feels, I don't know, this is just my feeling, a little sloppier. It just feels a little sloppier than in the Model Y. I don't know why. I don't know what that's about, but that's that's the fact. To me, it just feels a little sloppier. Are you trying to park here? That's kind of cool. <laughs> Whatever. Um, I'm just chatting. So we'll get some updates. Hopefully that'll fix it all. I don't know if it's just because the car's bigger or something different with the suspension, but something feels a little sloppy. So hopefully this will all get wrapped up. Uh, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed this one. You will see me at FSD in the next video.